I have the keys to a 2023 Porsche 911 Carrera GTS. I'm gonna take it for a spin, give you my impressions. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Porsche offers GTS versions of nearly all its cars, and they tend to be the sweet spots of the various model ranges. In the case of the 911, the GTS starts as a Carrera S, but has a 10mm lower ride height, Porsche's active suspension management tech, staggered 20-inch front and 21-inch rear wheels with a center lock design, and a sport exhaust system, all of which is standard. You also get the larger brakes from the 911 Turbo S, and inside, there's Racetech's suede fabric. Opting for a GTS gets you more power as well. This car has the same 3-liter twin-turbo flat-6 engine as the Carrera S, but power is boosted to 473 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque, increases of 30 horsepower and 30 pound-feet. Porsche says a rear-wheel drive 911 Carrera GTS like my test car can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds, compared to 3.5 for the base Carrera S. A new Carrera GTS starts at $152,550 including destination, but my racing yellow test car has a sticker price of $161,510. The big ticket option is an $8,690 lightweight package that removes the back seats and fits single-piece carbon bucket seats up front. This option also includes lightweight glass, rear axle steering, and a slightly tweaked steering tune. Porsche says this option saves 55 pounds, which honestly isn't that big of a difference. Put someone in your passenger seat and you'll cancel out that weight savings and then some. Let's head out in the 911 Carrera GTS. I'm gonna start with the car in normal mode just because honestly, I think it's really set up nicely right when you get in the car. You don't need to put it into sport. You don't need to change the settings or anything. The car just is so good. Uh, you know, I'm a manual transmission guy until the day I die, like through and through, but the eight speed PDK gearbox in this car is outstanding. The shifts are quick, but they're also smooth. They're really well-timed. I mean, just there in normal mode, it was easily holding gears through turns. You know, it downshifts proactively as you're braking. It's just a really great gearbox. And if there's ever a moment where you're like, no, I, I kind of want to, you know, I need to fix some things. There's paddle shifters here on the steering wheel, so you can just go up and down through the gears. Though I will say, I wish the paddles on this car were a little more engaging. You know, there's a lot of cars out there that have these really nice, big metal shifters that are mounted to the column. And while the metal on these shifters is perfectly nice to touch, you know, the action is kind of small and the shifters themselves are a little small. And I just don't ever really feel compelled to use the PDK's manual function, uh, which I guess is good and that it's so wonderfully tuned um, as you're driving. You know, the standard chassis setup in this car, obviously it's a little stiffer than what you get in a Carrera S, but it's still really comfortable. This is a really smooth, really nice car to drive. And I've got to say, you know, I appreciate that it has 473 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque, but it doesn't feel like a rocket ship. You know, it doesn't feel you know, so much faster or anything than a, a Carrera GTS. Um, but this engine is just such a sweetheart, so it's really hard to complain. All right, since I reached the end of the road, I'm gonna throw it over into sport mode now. Engine fires back on. Uh, and I've got the sport exhaust here, which comes on automatically in sport mode. So we can hit the road again. You know, this car has the lightweight package, uh, which is expensive. It's almost $9,000. But one of the things that you get is thinner glass with less noise insulation. So it means you can really hear that sport exhaust a lot better. Um, I'm a big fan of the way this engine sounds coming out through that sport, uh, sport exhaust system. 
And so, you know, I'm the sort of person where even just driving around in the city, I'll turn sport exhaust on just because I love listening to it. I really do. Steering in this car is just so wonderful. It's really light on center, but there's tons of feedback. You really know exactly what's happening at road level. There's a lot of communication, a lot of feedback through the wheel. And that's one of the things I've always appreciated the most about Porsche sports cars. They talk to you. You feel like you know what's going on. And you know, when you're driving a fast car on a good road, that's really important. Equally important, uh, this car has the torque vectoring rear differential. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I love pulling hard in this car. But between the torque vectoring rear differential and the rear axle steering, uh, there's just a ton of grip. You know, a lot of that comes down to the 305 section rear tires, which do a lot to really make this thing handle beautifully. Um, but being able to move the torque across the axle and then that little bit of steering from the rear axle just to kind of help tuck the rear end in around corners. It just, it, it really, really, really makes a world of difference in how this car drives. I guess I've got to say a final note here about the brakes in this car. You know, these aren't carbon ceramic brakes. These are the same brakes that you get in a 911 Turbo, but they're just so wonderful. I never feel like there's a lack of power or there's any fade or, you know, there's, you can brake hard like that and there's no front end dive. There's no skittishness. There's no nothing. The brakes are just solid. They really feel like they can last for, you know, miles and miles and miles of repetitive use. All right, so for this final quick run, I'll pull into Sport Plus mode just to get a little bit of a... Uh, uh, just like that. I mean, the gearbox holds everything to redline. Sport Plus mode really turns this car into the next level animal that it is. Uh, I mean, this thing is just super fun to drive. All right, so now that I've come back, put the car in park, turn off the sport exhaust so you can hear me more. Let's go through the scorecard about this car. So first up, we've got the car show factor, which look, I live in Southern California. 911s are kind of a dime a dozen here. So if you want your car to stand out, especially at a car show, you've got to do an interesting color, a cool spec, something to differentiate it from the crowd. I think the 911 Carrera GTS looks good. I love the sport front end. I love the staggered wheels, you know, everything about it is nice fundamentally, but the exact spec of this car is just not for me. Racing yellow is nice, makes a statement, uh, but black wheels, I just, I can't get behind. They kind of get lost in the overall design of the car. You know, all the little things that differentiate 911s from each other, there's so many little ways that you can make your car stand out. And I just feel like this exact spec, which it's kind of unfair to say because it's a media review fleet car, uh, I just wouldn't do it this way. But so I guess in terms of car show score, I'm going to have to give this one a six. It just it looks like any other 911, which isn't to say it's bad because the 911 looks great. But there's just something kind of missing about this car. So next up, we'll go for the daily driver factor. And that's where this score, or that's where this car scores really highly. I mean, you can get it pretty much loaded with everything. I've got a nice Alcantara steering wheel. You can get heated seats. You can get the uh, sport buckets that aren't these full carbon fiber buckets. You've got a full infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, automatic climate control. I mean, all of the creature comforts that you would need to live with a 911 every day, you can get to the GTS. I would absolutely get the standard or the sport seats with power adjustment. I love these buckets for when you're driving really hard on canyon roads and they'd be great on the track. But for daily driving, they're a little hard to get in and out of. They're comfortable, but it's just, I, I feel like I wouldn't really prioritize this level of support every day, um, especially since you can't get them with heat and I will always have heated seats in my car. So I guess daily driver point wise, we'll give it a nine because you really could drive this car every single day. I would probably sooner rather have a Carrera S or even a base car or a Carrera T just because you can get kind of the same level of equipment with, 
you know, a little bit less power and you don't need all 473 horsepower to make a statement day to day. But yeah, so we'll score it pretty high as a daily driver. Road trip now, I'm going to have to score it a little lower because this car has the lightweight package. So there's no rear seats, which means you've got places to put bags and things, but it's a lot louder on the freeway. There's more tire noise. There's more wind noise. Uh, you know, the exhaust after a while on the freeway, I usually end up turning it off just because, you know, it's, it's starting to drown out any conversation that I'm having or any music that I'm listening to. I mean, this car has the optional Bose stereo system, which is really nice, but it's kind of useless at freeway speeds just because it's so loud in here. Uh, comfort wise, the 911 is great for a road trip. So no issues there. And I mean, the front trunk is big enough that, you know, a couple days ago, I put a full carry on suitcase and a backpack in there. So you can take all the stuff with you that you need for a road trip. Um, I'm going to have to give this car, let's call it a seven out of 10. I mean, I would still totally drive across the country in one of these, um, just maybe not with the lightweight package, but you know, that's doable. And then finally, we come to the fun factor, which, I mean, how do you not have fun driving any 911, let alone a Carrera GTS? The car sounds great. It handles so well. The transmission is wonderful. I mean, at no point am I driving this thinking to myself, yeah, I really wish I had a 911 Turbo or a GT3. Uh, you know, if you're tracking your car or you really, really, really want the ultimate 911 experience, sure, get those cars. But there's nothing about driving a 911 Carrera GTS that makes me feel like I'm lacking or I'm disappointed or I'm missing out on anything else. So fun factor, I'll give it a full points, 10 out of 10. I love this car. I love driving this car. I'll be really upset when I have to give it back to Porsche. Um, but that's the way it goes. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and like this video for more stuff from Porsche Club of America. And uh, hope to see you on the road again soon.